Dad heard about a little boy of six whose parents tied the child to a stake in the yard. I think it was behind their shop. And locals reported this to the authorities and the police got to hear about this because it wasn't acceptable to tie your child to a stake in the backyard while you went off to work abandoning the child. Although, as I said, the parents were working out the front somewhere. So the police had the good sense to report it to uh, the mental uh, hygiene authority and uh, a social worker went out and uh, the story took its course and uh, the long and the short of it was that the parents said, uh, look, we're not sending our kids to queue. This child is not going to queue the cottages. There are some pretty horrific stories uh, around uh, the Kew Cottages because the community just didn't know about it and abject neglect was probably the best way to describe uh, the attitude of governments and uh, so on at the time and agencies. And uh, there were open drains. Kids were sleeping on uh, straw-filled uh, bags and this sort of thing. It was horrible. Peter didn't go there until much later. Right. Peter didn't go there until 1960. We're talking about 1953. So the long and the short of it again is that an influx of money came into the Herald office and Dad, of course, was writing his column and did several stories featuring conditions at the Kew Cottages with the result that John Kane Senior the Premier of the day and the government decided to do something about it and uh, put some money into the cottages. But uh, Dad and the Herald's appeal raised just under $50,000, which was matched dollar for dollar by the government, who fixed up the bathrooms and the laundries, carpets, painting, repairs, plumbing and all that sort of thing. And uh, mm. several of the wards were made habitable. Things moved slowly and Dad went back... Uh, again and again just to check up on progress. <laughs>